Hey, Walter Sorrell's back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, day one, Project Nightfall. So I'm working on introducing a new knife model, the Nightfall, which I'm carrying the prototype of on my hip right now. Now, I know a lot of viewers have expressed an interest in seeing what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. So the whole idea here is that I'm gonna be cranking up this new series where I'm gonna show pretty much everything that I do uh, during the day in the knife shop. The idea here is to give you some texture, I guess, you know, not just instructional type stuff, which obviously I've been doing for years and years, uh, but something that'll give you a sense of what it's like to actually run a small knife shop. All the stuff you have to juggle, uh, what some of the challenges are and so forth. Now, first and foremost, I'll be tracking the making of this knife, uh, but that's not the only thing that I'll be doing. So my plan is to try and show each and every day, uh, at least for a couple of weeks, you know, we'll see. Uh, video production is extremely time consuming. So uh, maybe we'll do it every day, maybe not, but that's the plan. All right, let's jump into day one, making the night fall. We'll move over to the workbench and I'll start talking about the specifics of the knife and how I'm gonna go about uh, making it. So yeah, coffee, the most important part of my morning, but Second most important today is that I am inaugurating really a big, big change in the way that I do business. Now, I have been making uh, knives on my small CNC machine for, I think, seven years now, something like that. But this past month, I got myself a Haas Mini Mill II big boy CNC machine by Haas standards. It's one of the smallest machines they make, but by my standards, this is a huge upgrade. It's a very, very big deal and uh, really a change of, of kind of my whole business model. So my guys out in California at Ameribraid, Eric and Kevin, they have got a laser table and they have lasered out this blank. It's I think 50 thou bigger than the actual knife is going to be. So this is going to go onto the CNC machine and I will mill this out to its final shape. Now in the past I used to put a whole sheet of steel on my the CNC machine, my smaller old Tormach, and I would mill all the way around this thing and it took a very very long time to do, ate up extremely expensive tools and maybe just not the ideal way to do it. So I'm trying out the laser cutting approach now, real close to the final dimension, then mill it out on the Haas. So today is the first day that I've actually done any legit knife making on that machine. I've done all kinds of other cool stuff trying to get myself up to speed on this new machine, but this is the first one of these that I've done. So just in the big picture sense, what I'm trying to do here is to run a whole set of knives through an entire process and see how long it takes me, see kind of what my failure points are. So once I've gone through that full exercise, making the blades, making the handles, doing all the grinding, the finishing, putting the handle pins in and everything. Actually, these are screw-on handles. Just the whole thing, soup to nuts, shipping these blades. Then I'll have a good feel for exactly what I need to do to make these this whole process better and to ramp it up to a little bit larger numbers. Now, a lot of people figure once you got a CNC machine, this is how you make knives on it. Not so. The CNC lets you save time on certain kinds of things, but basically you still have to do all the same stuff. It just kind of saves you some of the dumbest parts of the grinding process. So I've been using these Pearson pallets for years. Basically you machine all the little areas that you're going to be needing to fix your whatever part you're making. So you have to machine the whole thing yourself. Here's what these pallets look like before I machine them myself. 
They're just a big blank of aluminum, but they've got these very precisely milled recesses in the bottom that fit onto the base that you install more or less permanently onto the table of your milling machine. So basically I've got four or five little stations on here. One to drill the holes, one to do the outline, and then a couple to run a little fillet around it. And then finally, the bevel is machined. So I've been using this on the Tormach, but now I just transfer it over. I've put a new Pearson pallet system into the new Haas. And so I'll be running it off of there. So basically all I'm doing is screwing them down onto the fixture, running all these little programs. Everything's working amazingly well on the Haas so far. I was afraid there was going to be a huge learning curve. It was one of those things where it just sort of took a few days to wrap my head around how the whole thing worked. And once I kind of got over that hump, I've really found it pretty easy to use. It obviously has a lot more capabilities than my Tormach, but you know, at the end of the day, it's kind of doing the same thing. It's a CNC machine. In some of these, I'll be using coolant and some not. All that milky looking stuff is coolant. It's really hard to see what the tools are doing when the coolant's going, so some of these I try to turn the coolant off. I don't use coolant. I run everything dry on my Tormach, so I'm really kind of experimenting, trying to run everything very slowly and running some of it with coolant and some not, and just trying to see how that all works. The end mills that I typically use have a coating that is supposed to make them work at very high temperatures and they don't necessarily need to use coolant but anyway I'm, I've, I've never really used coolant so I'm trying to experiment with it and learn about it. Hey, if you're enjoying this video or the other knife making videos that I've been making for the past 14 years, yes, that's right, please help this channel by supporting us on Patreon. You know, all these nifty cameras and lights and stuff cost money, and the time that I spend on this video does not begin to be covered by the tiny amount of dough that I get from, you know, ads on YouTube. The more support I get, the more videos that I can put out, the more help I can give you guys. As a way of saying thanks for your support, I make plans for most of my builds available to my subscribers on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Walter Sorrels. So here I'm running the bevels. This is actually probably the single place where I gain the most advantage. That and profiling. The truth is it's not really about labor saving, though that's part of it. The great thing about this is that when it works right, the quality goes up. It's just easier to get a perfect bevel on there. After the bevels are run on here, everything is going to go into grinding, and I'll go grind off the little tabs and do all kinds of other stuff. So yeah, I, uh, I stuck one of these in upside down and it kind of screwed up the whole thing. Oh well, these things happen. So that's it for today. Hit the e-stop, turn this puppy off. Unbelievably successful day. So I got about a tray and a half of knives, kind of half finished which was really as much as I possibly could expect to. Uh, basically got started this afternoon, spent all morning kind of fixing little mistakes that I'd made. This program that I was running today, I'd originally run on my Tormach, and you have to kind of change the post-processing, and there's a whole bunch of monkeying around you got to do. And so I really wasn't able to get started until this afternoon. Like I said, unbelievably successful. Uh, this really just looks great to me. The finish is good. Uh, the tolerances are good. Everything about it is a real upgrade over what I've been doing in the past. That's going to mean less time 
on the grinder, less time hand finishing things and fixing little problems that, I mean, little problems always crop up, but you want them to crop up as little as possible. And I only made one super stupid mistake. So uh, feel pretty good, didn't crash any tools, uh, didn't break any tools, didn't crash the machine. So big win for today. Tomorrow we're gonna come back and finish all these things and uh, then all of them will look like this and I'll probably have a chance to get started grinding these blades, grinding the little tabs off and all that stuff. And it's gonna start look, looking more and more like a knife every day. All right, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in another day or two. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like what we're doing here, please subscribe and make sure that you click on that bell so you get notified of all the latest videos. Want to buy a knife from me? Check out my modern blades at tacticsarmory.com. Digging the channel? You can support our video making efforts on Patreon. You know, I've been banging away on these videos for like 10 years, so I hope you'll show some love for all that hard work. Link in the cards and descriptions. Finally, if you're interested in making Japanese swords, check out my full line of Japanese sword videos where I show how to forge Japanese swords as well as how to polish them and how to make fittings, handles, and scabbards. WalterSorrelsBlades.com